So I've got here a GBA SP and I've installed a clean amp on it. So we've got nice loud audio. The problem with most of the Game Boys is you'll have inherent noise on the system. Most of it's from power noise, uh, RAM not being filtered correctly, simple issues. And in order to fix them, you might know I've made uh, DHUM kits. I've made them for the GBA, the GBA SP, the Neo Geo Pocket Color. And it removes 99% of all of the inherent noise. So I've just got one with an amp installed at the minute. And I'll power it up and show you the noise as it currently stands. Then I'll show you installing the DHUM kit. And then we'll compare the noise afterwards. So all you'll really need for this is a screwdriver to get inside your console and a soldering iron to attach the DHUM kit. So it's a nice easy install. So let me just first power up the console. I'm just going to power it from the bench for now, just so you can hear the audio. And you can hear it boot there. And now if I just get this speaker to the microphone, just so you can hear the noise. And then we'll do the same comparison once the DM kit's installed. So let's just remove this for now. And let's jump over to the bench and install this. Let's bring the scope around. All right, so here's the DM kit. And you can see it's fairly self explanatory where it goes. You just set the kit over, see it's over the hole there and it goes down by the power button. Fits nice and snug around the console where it's fairly obvious where it goes. You can also see this is actually missing a capacitor here. Uh, so I'll just grab this out of the bin and this is actually missing a capacitor on where we're gonna go. So C63 is missing. But I'm still not gonna worry about that too much because the DM kit itself already has extra capacitors on here. So it will likely not be an issue. So once you've got the board in place, you want to make sure these are aligned here because we are going to be soldering to this capacitor top and bottom and this missing one top and bottom. And then down here we'll solder to the power pins. So really to start with, I'd probably want to position it accurately based on these points because these will be the hardest. So flux always helps here. Keeps the solder flowing nicely while you're working on it. I'm just going to blob solder onto the pad. Now this is actually harder because there's no capacitor on there. So let me just blob it on this capacitor first to fix the board in place. You can see that one's tacked there. And then that one's tacked there. Now because this doesn't have a capacitor on here, you can use a little trick and just bridge the gap with a bit of Kynar wire. Again, we sell this in the store. If not, just use a uh, sort of 28 gauge wire, ideally no thicker than 26. And then just place the wire onto the little pad that we're trying to get to. Pop the solder in and it acts as a natural bridge. So normally you wouldn't have to do that. This is because this board's actually missing a capacitor. You've seen how it's much easier to solder when there's a capacitor there. And at the same time, don't worry too much about uh, knocking off the capacitors because the board actually adds them. Anyway, back to the system, adds more than it has. Let's take a look at that. I'm trying to work without the microscope instead of looking through the microscope. So that looks like it's on there as well. Trim that. I'll just clean this up with IPA so we can get a better view. And we can see there we've got the solder joint onto the pads and we have the solder onto the capacitors so there's the tricky part done 
And now all that's left is simply soldering these two pads on here. So same idea goes here. This one is going onto the power switch here. So if we just simply pre-tin both pads. I've lost my tweezers, so I'll just use a screwdriver for now, hold it down. And you can see I've got room for improvement on the position of this uh, install. I can actually move this pad down a bit on the next version. But it's a nice big pad, so it's nice and easy. You just add plenty of solder. And then when you place down, you can get a connection. Same here, this is ground. So for this ground, it's simple again. Pre-tin this pad, pre-tin the metal contacts, and it just goes on that simple. Flatten it down a little bit if we want. And there we go. So there really is nothing more to installing the kit than a little bit of patience and six solder blobs. And there's the Dion kit installed. You can still see you maintain the ability to put your screw through there. Although currently the clean amp sits here, so we still lose that screw. I will make a flex wire free kit, so a clean amp pro for the SP as well when I get five. And I'll free up that uh, screw hole again so we don't have to leave a screw hole. But there's the Dion kit. So now let's just juice this thing up and make sure it still works. Take a ground point here, Get the battery vaults here, and there we go. And now the noise is significantly reduced. So let me just hold that up to the microphone again, the same distance. And hopefully you can hear that it's massively reduced. It's not completely gone on the SP. The GBA, it's pretty much fully gone. Uh, the SP, you've still got a little bit of noise there. So again, there's probably room for improvement where I can remove further noise from the system. But compared to the original, it removes a huge amount of noise. Basically, the SP isn't even usable without a Dion kit. The, the sound quality is terrible when you amplify it up. So a Dion kit's absolutely required, really, for any sort of SP mod. The main thing to look out for when you're soldering these, as I mentioned, is don't worry too much about knocking the caps off, but do make sure that the top and bottom pads aren't bridged together. Otherwise, that will just dead short the power. Uh, it will blow the fuse, which will then have to just replace the fuse. Uh, but yeah, just make sure it's not bridged. That's the only concern. And that's it. There's the GBA SP Dion kit installed.